morning everyone uh, i'll be presenting a paper on is type 2 macular telangiectasia or mactel a bilateral and symmetrical disease entity uh, my chief author is dr ramesh venkatesh and i have no financial interests so as we all know type 2 macular telangiectasia is actually uh, an acquired bilateral neurodegenerative disease which is associated with reduction of macular pigments like lutea, uh, lutein and zeaxanthin with secondary vascular changes Uh, it has a slowly progressive central vision loss with foveal atrophy and a neovascular membrane proliferation the currently accepted staging was given by uh, gas and bloodies 1993 wherein stage 1 has been defined as occult telangiectatic vessels identified uh, as late uh, phase temporal uh, perifoveal hyperfluorescence on fa and the entire staging was given on the basis of finding of fluorescence angiography and other imaging modalities now the current understanding of the pathomechanism uh, says that it's a the bilaterally bilaterality is a characteristic of type 2 mactel there are very few case series in literature which comment about its unilateral or asymmetric presentation there was a large scale study uh, conducted by the mactel uh, study uh, research group wherein baseline characteristics of eyes were uh, studied and they only mentioned uh, asymmetry now the lacunae in current literature uh, which exist are that the microvascular changes in oct angiography occur before visible structural changes on oct in fellow eyes of uh, asymmetric mactel patients but none of these literature uh, studies they used angiography to describe stage 1 of the disease as was actually originally described by gasson lodi also there's a lack of literature on the asymmetric distribution of the disease and uh, limited information regarding the prevalence of asymmetric distribution and uh, disease stage asymmetry between the eyes thus in this backdrop we decided to study the prevalence demography and clinical features of type 2 mactel cases showing inter eye disease stage asymmetry at presentation and at last follow up also we evaluated cases of mactel where wherein what we described as an apparent unilateral disease uh, as was a retrospective single center study wherein bilateral good quality imaging uh, cases were included and we studied the clinical features multicolor imaging uh, oct angiography and uh, fundus fluorescence ang uh, angiography in selected cases uh, as we all know mactel as described uh, by multicolor imaging uh, and uh, oct in these images shows a uh, uh, intraretinal pigment clumping loss of retinal transparency and in late stages a neovascular membrane beneath the retina Uh, also on oct angiography here you can see as in uh, a temporal loss of uh, a temporal perifoveal graying which can be seen and uh, an abnormal vasculature which is seen more so on the so on the deep capillary plexus layer but can extend up to the choroidal slab also our results showed we studies uh, we studied 280 eyes of 140 patients wherein 84 had a symmetrical mactel whereas 56 had asymmetrical uh, mactel presentation and uh, mostly we saw that there was a difference uh, we found the majority of cases in our study they fell into the stage 2 and uh, there were 15 eyes which did not show features of mactel on clinical examination uh, three eyes lacked uh, features of type 2 mactel clinically and oct but showed classical perifoveal characteristics on angiography so we labeled these eyes as stage 1 type 2 mactel there were another remaining 12 eyes wherein on angiography oct angiography there were no features which have already been described and but the fellow eye showed some stage of mactel this we described as unilateral natural type 2 mactel there was a two stage difference seen at presentation in 26 eyes and at last follow up in about 8 eyes uh asymmetrical groups test, uh, had statistically significant better visual acuity compared to symmetrical group but not so in the advanced stage the visual acuity at presentation in the asymmetrical group was compared to the visual acuity uh, from the symmetrical group even at uh, the last follow up approximately half of the patients showed a two level uh, stage difference between the two eyes at presentation as well as follow up and less than 5% uh, of the patients showed a four or five level difference Now this is one of the uh, patients from our study which was a 58 year old male diabetic who had right eye as you can see in absolutely normal fundus whereas the left eye shows a uh, pigment deposition and uh, loss of transparency of the retina similar findings were uh, also corroborated on the multicolor imaging 
on the oct you can see the right eye is absolutely normal without any uh, sta without any stage change whereas the left eye uh, shows the subretinal uh, neovascular membrane proliferation same findings were noted on the angiography also and uh, OCT angiography here in you can see the right eye there is no uh, network of vessels seen on any of the slabs whereas in the left eye the superficial and deep capillary plexus both show uh, an abnormal vascular change at the foveal avascular zone which is extending uh, up to the choroidal slab. To conclude, despite being commonly thought of as a bilateral symmetrical disease, MACTEL type 2 can, uh, can exhibit inter-eye disease stage asymmetry as well as disease asymmetry. We also added a unilateral type 2 MACTEL disease as a separate stage which needs further investigation. We also propose a different, a new staging which is the unilateral disease as I already described earlier. The strengths of our study was, was a large cohort of cases from a single center. So there was consistency in imaging across different centers. And uh, we could also assess the longitudinal data of all of our patients. The main drawback was it was a retrospective study. So uh, all follow-up visits could not be assessed. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, good, good presentation. Uh, a couple of things what I want to tell you is, number one, unfortunately, we can't call. Yes because uh, confocal blue reflectance yes if you do cbr even in the normal eye yeah. you will see increased reflectance that okay. is the earliest sign okay. understand oct is normal hmm. but cbr will show you increased reflectance hmm. that is the earliest change in multimodal image okay. if you leave octa octa is yeah. a, unfortunately a very difficult Mm -hmm. uh, uh, modality to interpret. Yes. So, but uh, CBR will definitely be affected. So that's mm -hmm. why we cannot call it using multimodal imaging. You cannot mm -hmm. call it unilateral. Yeah. In the case that you showed gross asymmetry, if you see the color photograph itself, there is slightly increased parafoveal reflectance is there. Little In bit the parafoveal right reflectance yes. is there. Yes. Therefore, you can easily say that. There's yeah. The third thing is that we have also reported the presence of hyperreflective dots. Mm -hmm in one of our papers which were published about one and a half years ago in eyes with normal OCT. The, okay. I mean, beautiful hyperreflective dots. We don't know whether they are Muller cells, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, regeneration or whether they are photoreceptor cells that are just being released. We really okay. do not know. But uh, characteristic hyperreflective dots, even in eyes which are normal in OCT. Okay. But it's a good observation. Now, how many years follow-up do you have for the eyes with near normal OCT? How many years follow-up? So, uh, starting from the minimum we kept as six months to we have up to 44 months of, 44 uh, months. yes. And follow. during the period of 44 months, did you see any change in the normal eye? In the normal eye, yes, sir, there has been a conversion. conversion. The patients who did not have, it, which is also one of the reasons we want to state this because those eyes are the ones which actually need to be followed up more closely than the one which already is in a stage. We had also thought which to... Eye, which eye was more commonly affected right eye or left eye so left eye left Actually, eye was more yes. commonly because there is a recent paper that yeah. has been published where they have shown that something to do with the circulation hmm. i mean uh, i mean it's a speculation yeah that uh, basically carotid artery Mm -hmm. uh, 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 circulation itself is probably one of the reasons that the blood supply is more through one mm -hmm. side than the other side okay. and that's why the i mean asymmetry comes more commonly to one side yeah so, so this change actually uh, the lateral the uh, whether right eye or left eye this was not significant in our paper but the MACTEL study group which I stated which was studied I think in 2005 or something they had stated that they found significantly more in the left eye left actually eye. than us. This is right eye. Yes, Yours sir? is right eye. No, no. In ours also That's it's left, left but the data was not significant as such for the left eye. We also actually thought, sorry ma'am you can please, uh, we also thought of giving a stage zero instead of a unilateral staging but we did not have angiography images of all patients. Uh, one modality which actually we lagged was autofluorescence also for all patients. So that's why instead of calling it as a, uh, as a stage zero, we decided to call it uh, unilateral basically. And uh, in your 44 months follow up, did you find any patient who you said earlier was unilateral hmm. turned to bilateral as in one side uh, okay yes ma'am we did find that 
uh, initially there was no stage as such which was described by the gas and bloody staging but eventually they ended up having uh, mactil in the other by the but then that we were able to notice because on all visits we were imaging both the eyes which normally is not the case when we follow up such patients and what was your follow up period like? Six months to forty. Uh, for this was a retrospective study, ma'am. So we went back and looked at these patients. So we found forty-four months up till uh, the imaging was available. Good one.